Okay, this is one of the hand mills, hand wheels uh, for the uh, caper attachment, uh, the locking mechanism. So we cleaned them up on the lathe, got them nice and round, got all that, uh, you know, chowder marks, as uh, uh, Tom Lipton says, off uh, from the old uh, channel lock knurling tools they, they used or something similar. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going to center this up. I have it set up here on a parallel, so it's a I got a half an inch or so clearance from the V blocks, two V blocks, uh, clamping on those threads. And doing this, I uh, usually get no damage uh, from on the threads. It's a nice uh, big surface area there. So anyway, so I'm going to dial indicate this in. I need one of those. Uh, Fancy uh, spindle uh, gizmos of Tom's there and, and uh, James's in there. Anyways, I've already kind of worked on it, so uh, actually we're pretty good there. Zero, quarter, 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 so, you know. That's pretty good. I'm going to leave it right where it's at then. Well, we're going to call it zero. Then what we're going to do is I have a one inch end mill. And I calculated the bolt circle where the one inch end mill needs to go around here to scallop, to scallop the edges. We're going to, uh, there we go, to scallop the edges. So in this case, the radius. For the bolt circle is 1.754. We're going to do 12 scallops. And uh, this is one of the advantages of using a CAD drawing to figure this stuff out. It makes it nice and easy. I'm going to go in uh, 100 thousandths of an inch, roughly, uh, uh, is what it is, the scallop depth. Should come out pretty nice. So you've seen me do the set the uh, uh, DRO up um, before, so I'm not going to show that again. But if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, all D, if, if your DRO has a function of bolt circle, you know, they're all, not all the same necessarily of how they all work. Okay, got the one inch end mill in there. We're setting uh, position number one. For the uh, scallop, and we're just gonna we're gonna jump around because the one scallop on this side has the same um, uh, Y position, I should say. So whenever I can do it, you know, then I'll jump to another one. Then I'll probably go over here, and then maybe over here type thing. You know, it I'll just jump around because I'll use when I might have the same Y or X position. It saves me a little bit of cranking. And I'm just raising the table up on the z-axis there into the cutter. I'm gonna. I'm trying to trying some of this on here as a cutting agent. It works really good with their annular cutters. I, uh, I use this all the time with their annular cutters, the Hugen. Uh, so I'm gonna try it on here as far as the milling uh, stuff goes. Something a little different um, than the uh, anchor loop. Sticks on there real well.
That way you can see what it's going to look like. And then on the, I'll just cut away and then do the wrap. This is just a tooth lube high speed cutter. Getting a really good finish. So you guys get the idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, I'll bring you back uh, when we get it all done. Okay, over to the last one right here. So this Hugen stuff works pretty good. Service finish is real good. Very smooth, very nice. This, is a, this was a nice sharp end mill courtesy of uh, David Calabretta again. Uh, thanks David, that thing worked great. Burrs, but we'll clean that up. There you go. Count really nice. That's the one little screw up on there, but this is just so you know, this was the second one. I already did the first one. I didn't have any problems with that at all. So we'll uh, get them uh, cleaned up, deburred, and uh, show you all finished there together. Okay, so uh, here's the pieces. We'll just push that little mic out of the way. So uh, here's the uh, two uh, uh, shoes or wedges or whatever you want to call them on there. We got all sorts of good angles working on that as you uh, can see in the video as you saw I should say um, with all the setups there it came out really good and then the hand wheels I like that scallop that uh, that will give a that gives a real good uh, grip on there those came out good one we just had one little bobble but just a tiny little buffing and you never know that even happened so uh, so we get it lined back up but you get stupid when you're doing video sometimes so uh, that's the way it goes anyway I'm very happy with these uh, well uh, I mean I already tried the one out and actually when I put it up there I put it a couple of dings because it turned in there so you got to get it so it stays there up in there and then you put the handle in there hopefully it engages properly because it's made to go one way uh, but this one turned and like pinched it a little bit so I just gotta be careful about getting them in there, but I think they're gonna work out perfect Just perfect So thanks guys Thanks for watching making those So this will, should finish up uh, the repair for the taper attachment 
we'll uh, get the taper attachment going and set up and we'll be making that mandrel next and then uh, we'll be then we'll be doing the gear so we still got two more jobs to do uh, for the completion of all these projects all right thanks guys really appreciate you watching Okay, we're back. Uh, we're back over here to the taper attachment. So there's that dovetail. There, see, it, show you how they how those fit on there. Nice little clearance on that tip. Came out good. And uh, yep, I got a band aid on my finger. I broke my fingernail. Um, I had to work on a neighbor's gator today. And uh, but he's 96, so that's okay. I don't mind working on it for him. <laughs> Yeah, busted and hurts. Um, anyway, see how that fits right on there. Came out really good. Uh, nice clearance. So I'm gonna slip those up in there and get our hand wheels in. And uh, I think I'll put a little lube on those, and they should uh, work out just perfect. Okay, I got a little whey whey oil. We'll just. I'm gonna get a little squirt in these things and actually I probably should put grease on those, but I'll put a little whey oil on it for now. See how that works out. Slip them up in there. We'll see if we can get that thing to engage properly. It would be nice. Kind of a hokey setup, as far as I'm concerned. If that thing screws way. See that that doesn't screw up in there far enough. So that's not. That didn't get lined up right. That thing will screw up a lot farther than that when it's uh, in there proper, see. Not sure how to make it so it does go proper, but maybe I'll put some grease on the end and that might hold it up in there. All right, I put some uh, that uh, Hoogan uh, slick stick uh, lube cutting lube on there. It's real. It's a. It's really waxy. And uh, that is going to hold it up in there, I think. Get that started. I like that fluted hand wheel though that there we go now now it went over that over that embossed end oh yeah that's how it should be right about like that oh that looks well that feels solid boy that's good all right i'm gonna move the camera out of the way and get that other one in okay got both in there that other one went in Real easy, and I got them just hand tight, and I cannot move that. Oh, I can move it up and down though. So, okay, so I'll have to play with the play when I tighten it. Looks like, huh? There's a, you know, there is a little bit. So we'll uh, have to snug them up once it's in position, but. You know, I cannot slide it at all, so hopefully that'll be pretty good. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. 
uh, there, the conclusion of those, that repair. All right, thanks again, you guys, uh, for sticking with me on that. That's not good. I might not have had it tight enough. We're going to have to fix that.